are going to do a read aloud today called Fireboat. And it's the heroic adventures of the John J. Harvey. And this book is, um, you can see my light there, sorry. This book is a story that is about September 11, 2001. And I know that September 11, 2001, um, the anniversary of that day of the terrorist attacks was last week, but um, I didn't find this book in time to be able to get it to you for that this week. Um, let me just show you what 20 years of teaching looks like because I had to take it all home and it is in my basement. So I apologize if sometimes I'm a little behind, but I also think that you guys have had a chance to talk about September 11th last week and think about it and maybe see some things on TV. So hopefully this story will connect with you a little bit more and it doesn't have to be 9-11 when you read a story like this or remember that time period. So I hope you enjoy this. It is a different kind of book. And it is by M Myra Coleman. And we're gonna start. New York City, 1931. Amazing things were happening, big and small. The Empire State Building. Up, up, oh wait, sorry, let me try that again. The Empire State Building went up, up, up. So the Empire State Building is still a famous building in New York City today, but we're talking about 1931. So um, we're talking about uh, less, uh, just about 89 years. So that is uh, a while away or a while ago. Babe Ruth hits his 611th home run in Yankee Stadium. The Tasty Candy Treat Snickers hit the stores. I'm sure you've heard of Babe Ruth and Snickers before. 1931 in New York. The George Washington Bridge was suspended elegantly across the mighty Hudson River. You might be wondering, why are we reading this in science? Well, we're doing it to connect to um, some real life events, but also think about this, building a bridge is science. Um, there are bridges that haven't lasted. Scientists have to just, you know, had to figure out how to be able to suspend um, something over water like that, that could withstand um, people moving and winds and elements. So this is science too. Science is everywhere. Champion Penley Calling of Blarney won best in show at the Westminster Kennel Club. So that dog's name is Penley Calling of Blarney. On a, hot ja uh, <laughs> on a hot and jazzy night, the word hacha was invented. Hacha, hacha. All in New York, 1931. And on a sunny, fresh day, the John J. Harvey fireboat was launched. There was 12 fireboat, there were 12 fireboats in New York City. The Harvey was the largest, fastest, and shiniest fireboat of them all. So this is 1931. And um, New York City, uh, when you think about it, you probably think of Manhattan, and Manhattan has all the skyscrapers. But what you might not realize is Manhattan is a, it's an island. So a boat would make sense in New York to get to places to, in Manhattan because it's on the water, it goes all around it. But um, it probably wouldn't make sense here in Columbus. I mean, we have some rivers, but we are landlocked. We are in the land. So just a little different area. Where you live kind of determines how you live. All right, so let's talk about this boat, the John J. Harvey. It had five diesel engines, so it could go 20 miles per hour. That's pretty fast. Hey, we're gonna talk about speed this year. Eight pipes that could shoot 16 gallons of water per minute equal to 20 fire trucks. So it is a, it's like a, it's a fire boat. So it's like a, what a fire truck does, but on a boat. A completely round steering wheel. It had many brass nozzles housed in the gold room. A control dial in the, in the pilot's cabin. A very nice can to oil all squeaks. Ropes called lines. And lots of levers, buttons, and buckets. 
There was a pilot and a crew ready in two minutes to fight the fires. They were a brave group. And there was a dog named Smokey who did not put out the fires, but had many nice spots. So Dalmatian. You guys ever heard that? How Dalmatians are supposed to be um, a type of fire dog? The Harvey went up and down the river, fighting fires. It fought fires at the bustling piers. The piers were the places where ships and trains brought all the manner, <clears throat> excuse me, brought all manner of merchandise to be sold in the city, like wood and cotton and bananas and bubblegum and everything. So New York is on the Hudson River. So the boat's going on that river. It fought the fire of the great ocean liner, Normandy. Look how giant that ocean liner is and it's shooting water up there. They had a fire. Many years passed. A new captain had come on board, Bob Lenny. He and his crew fought many fires, but New York was changing. The Twin Towers were now the tallest buildings in New York. The piers were closing. And sometimes Harvey, just went out to have a celebration. So this is like a little picture of it to show you how small it is compared to a big liner. And here it is kind of like a zoomed up version. So it's kind of like I look small to you right now because I'm far away, but when I get close, I look way different. I look bigger. Same with the boat. This is the far away. This is the close up. Nineteen ninety five. The city no longer needed so many fireboats. The Harvey was considered old and useless. It sat in the water for five years, waiting to be sold for scrap. And then a very surprising thing happened. A group of friends were eating at a restaurant called Florence. They had heard about the fireboat and decided something. Let's save the Harvey, let's buy her. Everyone needs a fireboat, we won't put out fires. We'll just have fun. And they did. So this boat sat for five years doing nothing and then these people decided to buy it. Interesting, okay. They took it to Cadell's ship repair yard in Staten Island. Even there, they said, she's old. It will be hard to fix her. But the owner said, fix her. So they fixed beautifully. They repaired the two propellers, making them new with a shiny coat of brass. Brass does not rust. They repaired the holes with steel plates and covered the places where the rivets wept. They scraped barnacles and seaweed off the hull. Those are all things in the water that like stick on the boat. And they painted her with a shiny coat of red paint. That's really cool. So they're making her look nice and pretty, this boat. That's been sitting there for five years. And once again, the Harvey was on the water. Tim, the engineer, keeping things running smoothly. Jessica, the assistant engineer at the controls in the noisy engine room. Andrew welding, Chase helping, John fixing, Tom cooking, Huntley at the wheel, and Bob Lenny watching over everyone and being very proud. So they're not fighting fires, they're just using the boat, making it work like a boat does. It's kind of cool. They made friends with the other fire boats on the river, the firefighter and the McKean. Toot, 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 toot. A boat says hello with four toots, so toot, 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 toot. That's four. All right, that's it. Everyone said the Harvey is a nice old boat but she could never be used to fight a fire, never. But then on September 11th, 2001, something so huge and horrible happened that the world, the whole world shook. It was 8.45 in the morning, another beautiful and sunny day. Two airplanes crashed into the Twin Towers crashed, crashed, crashed into these two strong buildings. And I can feel my, my eyes getting heavy. You know, I didn't know anybody that died that day, but 
that was a day in our country that um, I felt sad and crushed and I sobbed for, for our country and for all the people that we lost and all of the pain. And it wasn't just that day. And obviously I still feel the effects today. So um, I know that you guys weren't alive during this time, but I'm sure that you've seen that it makes adults emotional. Um, this was a really, really scary and sad time for our country. But Mrs. Allforce always tries to find the good in things. And there were a lot of good things that came out from that day. And so we're gonna see that in the story. But I just want you to recognize it is emotional. The sky filled with fire and smoke. The buildings exploded and fell down to the ground. Many people were hurt. Many lives were lost. The news spread. The city had been attacked. Everyone was terrified, but people were brave. The entire city sprang into action. Firefighters and police officers and doctors and construction workers and teachers and parents and children and cooks. The mayor was strong, he said. We will all work together. We will not be broken. So listen to that. They're all working together. They're all helping. That's one of those positives. What were the people of the Harvey doing when the planes hit? Bob Lenny was trimming his was he, ugh, can't talk. Bob Lenny was trimming hedges. Tom was drinking tea in his kitchen. Chase was walking his dog radar. Tim was reading the paper. Andrew was welding. John was working. Wait, John was working. Huntley was reading David Copperfield. Jessica was writing a story, and the Harvey was snoozing at the pier. Nice personification there. Boat can't sleep. They all had one thought, get to the Harvey, and they did. They called the fire department. John J. Harvey, ready to help, how can we help? The answer came, you can't help fight the fire, but you can ferry people to safety. Ooh. But suddenly an urgent, wait, that makes sense? Yes. But suddenly an urgent message came loud and clear. John J. Harvey, where are you? We need you, we need you, we need you. The water pipes were broken and buried and the fire trucks that had raced to the scene could not pump water. The firefighters attached hoses to the Harvey. The Harvey fought the fires alongside the McKean and the firefighter. For four days and nights, the Harvey pumped water. The crew took turns sleeping. People brought supplies, fuel, sweaters, gloves, pizzas, sandwiches, and coffee. They worked and cried. They fought the fire until it was under control. So remember, this is a true story. Sorry about that reflection. Let me see if I lighten it. Um, this is a true story. And so think about that, four days a fire was burning that tells you how big it really was but how cool that a ship that they said would never ever sail again or fight fires again was actually helping on um the the biggest day of our of our american tragedy a big the biggest loss wait let me try to say this again it was the biggest tragedy on american soil okay and we had a, it was a terrorist attack so how cool that they were able to help that day. Finally, it was time for the Harvey to go home. Everyone on the boat had never seen anything so terrible and they had never felt so proud. The Harvey was a hero and everyone knew it. The Harvey won an important award and at the ceremony, the audience cheered and some even cried. I'll read that. For the a certificate it says national preservation award john j harvey for capping a distinguished career of service by coming out of retirement to provide invaluable aid that means like something you can't ever like pay back it's invaluable invaluable aid in new york city's hour of need october 18th 2001 
Now the Twin Towers are gone. Something new will be built. The heroes who died will be remembered forever. And the Harvey is back to being a very happy boat. Not scrapped, not useless, not forgotten. A proud and plucky friend. And all that's left to say is ha-cha and thank you. Wait a minute. There is one more thing. There is something more to say. The friends of Harvey have found a little tugboat to adopt. Doesn't everyone need a tugboat? That's the end. I like how they put all the like information for the boat or for the book. Can you see that? All the information for the book in words that look like waves. So it's kind of a fun play on that. That's the end. So um, this book is really pretty cool in the sense that you saw how something that people said was old and useless was able to help when it really needed to be help. We really needed help. And I think it's a really cool story um, of when people can believe in, in themselves and in something else. I know that this time period for all of us with COVID-19 has been very difficult. And I know you've made sacrifices, but I'm sure that you've also seen some people do good things for others um, during this time period. Maybe you help your neighbors or uh, help some friends or family. I know that we all can find a way to be helpful even during times that are difficult. And so as you reflect back on what you've learned about 9-11, I don't want you to forget about Fireboat and that small tugboat that did such a great thing on that, on that tragic day. Thank you. Mm -hmm.